Welcome to the Indomitable Snowman's Getting Started Guide to Legends mod. Congratulations on wanting to play modded Battle Brothers and choosing Legends mod as your choice of poison. I must say that the decision to up your anger management classes to twice a week is going to suit you well, because for some reason, the pain and suffering of vanilla Battle Brothers isn't enough already. Well, at least this guide video will help you get started in the scary world that is Legends mod. Disclaimer, the Indomitable Snowman is not responsible for any physical or mental issues that may develop from the increased masochistic tendencies as a result of playing this or any other mods. Quickly, before we start, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying this video or if it helped you in any way as I greatly appreciate the support and I'm always happy to hear when my videos are helping you guys or your gameplay experiences. Also, stick around to the end as I have important info and resources that will help you beyond this video. Right, with that out of the way, you're here for the splendor that is Legends mod. From the new origins to the variety of enemies and legendary foes, to the unique locations, original boss fights, and even the updated vanilla boss fights. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, that's gonna be rough. To begin, I'd strongly recommend playing around with the new mod settings as it can greatly enhance your combat gameplay. Viewing enemy health and armor values and viewing extra perk information helps with strategizing and allows you to plan your actions more accurately. If you grab the Swifter mod on the side, you'll be able to increase combat speed to shorten up the fights as well, as the slow animations of normal gameplay can become a drag after playing for so long. I usually set it at two times. Finally, here are the vanilla gameplay settings that I recommend and personally use in my own playthroughs. The main ones here are the faster player and AI movements, auto loot, reset equipment after battle, and the auto pause after leaving cities. Right, with settings all complete, we are now ready to start getting into the game itself. Just like vanilla, upon starting a playthrough, you'll immediately have to choose an origin. Choosing the right origin for you is crucial as it can make or break your experience with this mod and Battle Brothers in general. The skulls above each origin are a very rough guide on how hard they'll be. However, not every origin is as it seems, and some are a lot harder than you'd expect. My personal recommendations for new players are the Tutorial and Southern Mercenaries, as they are the bread and butter starts, nothing special, nothing to hold you back, great ways to learn the mod. The Northern Raiders is an all-time favorite, and also one I'd recommend to beginners and veterans alike. It gives you three great bros, ignoring the crappy monk, we, we, we don't talk about him, um, to boost your early game and to give you the best head start of almost any origin, while also having a super manageable downside of only having a single faction that hates you. In my opinion, choosing any origin other than these to start off with will usually test your game knowledge and abilities too much and won't let you learn valuable core mechanics of the mod as easily when you're starting off in this game. Right, now there's one more thing you'd need to do before starting the game, world settings. Over the development of the mod, these settings have been increased, decreased, added, removed, plenty of changes have happened, but they've always been there to tailor your experience or torture you, you know, pick your poison. Not as many options in between. Regardless, these are the main settings you want to have a look at as most of them shouldn't be touched. Nobles at War is the easiest late game crisis. Both Noble War and Holy War are easy as you don't have to join the wars, but the Noble War is simpler and safer to profit from. Learning on easier difficulties and higher starting funds is recommended until you get a grasp of the game and of the mod itself. Iron Man is strongly not recommended, as you can very likely lose saves to crashes with this setting. Decked out citadels and all trade buildings available are not crucial, but I recommend them as they allow you to have better citadels on the map, and you won't miss out on any specific trade buildings that you may want, as it forces at least one of every trade building to be on your map. Distance scaling and recruit scaling are extra difficulty modifiers I do not recommend unless you really want a challenge. However, skip and camp tutorial, bleeds count as kills, and world economy are great settings to enhance your gameplay that don't add very much difficulty at all. Dynamic Perks is the only setting that I'm on the fence about recommending, as I can't ever live without it myself. But for new players, it may produce too many headaches once you try and learn the perks and builds that you can make in this mod. Only use this setting when you're sure you can handle every recruit having a strong amount of randomness to their perk trees. These are my main recommendations, but please remember to read the setting descriptions to understand them more. Also remember that some settings may change slightly depending on the version of the mod that you are using. Final Disclaimer. Legends mod has grown over the years and will continue to evolve in the future. This means changes to different parts of gameplay can and should be expected, as new content gets added and existing content gets balanced and tweaked. As a result, this guide and my other guides may have some components that get outdated, so please remember to join the Discord for Legends, keep up the date with all the changes, and it's also a great place to ask questions about the mod itself. Also, you can join my Discord as well, as our community also helps with questions and enjoys the game and its many mods. Links in the description as usual. Okay, so you finally entered the game with your origin of choice and your settings intact. What to do now? Well, save. Yeah, yeah, save. Just save. Never stop saving. 
how about you just keep saving? And also, how about you just go and download a more auto saves mod to have more auto save slots? Seriously, this will save you so many headaches and it is highly recommended by my psych analyst. He says I'm slowly improving it because of it. As a big mod that is constantly updated, crashes and bugs will happen to the best of us and losing a save is the last thing anyone wants. So go download that more auto saves mod right now. Okay, welcome back, and glad to hear that you have the more autosaves mod. It's your first day in a new modded PvE playthrough, so what is a good way to start, you ask? Well, if you have vanilla experience, you know that most monsters, including direwolf, spiders, nox, etc., are a death sentence to early game party and should be avoided. Being wary of enemy types is crucial, as undead and green skins are also a big no-no early on. But nomads and barbarians are a maybe, depending on your luck, skill, and strategy. Yeah, strategy. However, brigands will be 100% of the bread and butter of your early game. Legends has new baby brigands called Rabble, and they are the perfect enemy to start murdering senselessly to extinction till their presence is no longer felt on this mortal plane of existence. Phew, almost lost my cool there. In general, picking your fights is the best advice I can give to new and veteran players alike. Battle Brothers does not pull punches, and it's very true for Legends. Regardless of the stage of the game you are at, some fights may be a complete breeze, while others may be entirely impossible depending on your lineup and strategy. And most of this can be put down to experience and knowledge of the game mod. Other than fighting, quests is still the bulk of the gameplay of this mod. So mosey on down to a city or town near you and grab some easy ones. Well, what is easy anyways? You'd think the number of skulls determines the difficulty, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. But you know, at least four skull quests are reliable and will always kill you, so that's a nice, I guess. The best thing to remember is that quests are not made equal. And a two skull brigand fight will never be the same as a two skull orc fight. Check every quest before deciding, as you should always gauge the quest on what it's asking you to do. Then you can kind of scale the difficulty on that type of quest by the skulls. Talking about quest types, you'll be happy to hear that delivery and caravan quests will provide relative amounts of experience, depending on quest distance, for your entire party upon completion. Combat oriented quests are also a viable early game, but require some preparation, party and equipment wise, to give you a decent chance of success. Building good bros is important, but since there are so many new backgrounds added in with Legends Mod, it can be overwhelming to know who is worth investing in and who you want to avoid. My cost-effective recruits video can help you with what recruits are usually best to stock up on. I also have a helpful spreadsheet that has stats on all the backgrounds so you can see which are more likely to be better rangers, melees, or tanks. I even have a tier list if you want to hear my opinion and ranking of all the backgrounds available in the mod in more detail. Regardless of your luck and bro choices, you will still need to buy them some cheap armors and weapons from the marketplace of any nearby town. Wooden weapons can be effective for your first couple of fights against Rabble, but fall off hard when versing thugs or anything with a shred of armor. Spears and swords use less fatigue and also help you offset your bro's low-level accuracy with bonus hit chance. I highly recommend a spear or sword paired with a shield to make low-level bros more effective. But what is attack without defense? Dealing damage is very important in this mod, and killing enemies quicker than they can kill or maim your bros is a strategy that you will improve over time. But you still need to have some armor on those flimsy sacks of flesh in your party. Legends has a wonderful new system to help keep your bros alive, and despite the fact that you will spend half of your gameplay organizing your inventory and playing around optimizing the layered armor of your bros, it's something I absolutely love about this mod. In vanilla, if you get an armor from an enemy, buy an armor from the shop, that is an armor that will stay like that for the rest of your gameplay and you will easily outgrow it. In Legends, most armors and attachments have a long-lasting benefit in your party as you can mix and match your own sets to improve your bros. This also means that weak enemies are worth it a little bit more because the weakest attachments can still improve any base armor that you have on your bros. Last but not least on your shopping list, remember that bandages save lives. And I, personally, am the biggest advocate for using nets. Grab all of the nets you can find. Nets are well worth double or triple their cost when used against tough opponents. Train yourself to use more nets in your gameplay and you'll see what I mean. Anyways, once you have your crew equipped and ready, you can start doing those combat quests. Brigant location and follow the tracks quests are the best way to get paid and earn XP at the same time. Remember that winning fights against random enemies in the world is okay, but getting towns to pay you for the same type of fight is just cash money. Now, fighting is great and all, but don't forget that caravans are a true gem of all quests. Except patrol quests, but that's for another video. But caravans are amazing because you're getting paid, you're getting free food, and extra hands to help in fights, even if they are kind of pathetic. And top of all that, you can even camp whilst traveling. But why is that helpful in any way, you ask? Because there's a whole new camping system that is implemented into Legends Mod, and you need to learn how to abuse it. I'll go into more depth on another video, but all you need to know is that time is money in this game, and camping gets you free stuff or save you a lot of money 
whilst other activities would take more time and effort to achieve the same result. Camping is great. Basically, camping is great when needed, and it's free when caravanning. Oh, and don't get sucked into Russian camp upgrades. They're not as important as you think, and they're very expensive. Other than the main point of picking your fights, money management is the main key to success. Knowing what is worth risking your hide for and learning to squeeze every last coin out of those nobles will help you survive the hard times and the company losses more easily. Because let's face it, Battle Brothers is hard, has a steep learning curve, and will punish your mistakes and still send unlucky hits to mow down your bros at any given moment. If you think XCOM is bad, welcome to a whole new world of RNG. So make sure you're making profits to be able to buy new bros and gears when you lose them. Good practices like learning how to try out your bros before recruiting them will also help you have less buyer's remorse and keep your bros lasting longer. Vanilla trouts are a complete joke, but please train yourself to always try out your recruits when playing Legends, as it will tell you their star qualities and whether it is really, really worth trying to spend money on this bro. This will greatly assist you in picking the right bro for your team. Speaking of right bros, just like in Vanilla, you will need to work on a team. Building a well-rounded team is more important than you think. Learning the value and balance of tanks, DPS, support, and ranged bros is important. And knowing when you need one, want one, or cannot afford to have it in your party. An all-melee team is easy to start with and can be successful when playing around their weaknesses, like fighting at night is a great strategy for melee teams, and I highly recommend anyone who's not used to building teams start with a melee team. They're actually pretty good. But eventually, you will want to learn the effectiveness of each bro's potential, and that comes with trial, error, and experience, YouTube guides as well, and asking questions. The biggest tip I can give is that melee defense is more important than you think, and is usually a good indicator of how long a bro will last in your party. However, learning to experiment with your builds on easier difficulties and seeing how perks work is crucial for getting a hang of this mod and its gameplay. There are many new perks you will not have seen in vanilla gameplay, and some of them synergize well with others, and some are absolutely useless together. Read their descriptions so you do not miss anything, as strong builds are very, very much possible with good bros and good choices. Roster size has also been adjusted in this mod to be a progressive experience, and I absolutely love how they changed it in Legends mod. Most Origins will start with a low roster size that will increase at certain renowned milestones. You can always check the next milestone at the top of your screen where the roster size is. Last but not least, to better understand the mod and its enemies, I suggest that you go out there, fight enemies you haven't fought before, get beaten up, learn from your mistakes, ask questions, and try again. Nobody gets it right the first time. Remember to have fun. Losing is fun. Wait, what was that? Oh, yeah, my legal team has required me to mention that this, in fact, is just a game. And that losing your favorite bro or your entire company after many hours of gameplay is nothing to lose sanity over. I don't have a problem, you have a problem. Okay guys, hope this video helps you with your first steps in Legends mod. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed and found this helpful in any way, as that greatly helps me in the channel. Finally, please don't forget to join the Legends and my own Discord so you can ask questions, get the help you need in your new adventures. Remember that links are in the description, and once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. See yous.